أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قال إبراهيم رب جعل خاذ البلد آمنا وجنبني وجنبني وبيني وبيني يا نعبد الأصنام In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. And remember when Abraham said, My Lord, make this city a city of peace and keep me and my children away from worshipping idols. My Lord, they have indeed led astray many among mankind so whoever follows me he is certainly of me and whoever disobeys me thou art surely most forgiving merciful dear ladies and gentlemen assalamu alaikum that means peace be upon you all thank you for coming tonight and sharing the festival of eid with us there is a lot of uncertainty and instability in the world, whether in the Middle East or the global financial crisis. It is more important than ever for people of different faiths and beliefs to get together and share the common values and break down barriers of ignorance and misunderstanding. So a little, a little about tonight. This event has been organized by the Ansarullah, an auxiliary organization of Ahmadiyya Muslim community. So who are the Ansarullah? Well, first of all, I'll tell you what it means. In Arabic, it means helper of God. Not that God needs any help, of course, the origin actually relate to the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. A verse of the Holy Quran states, And when Jesus perceived their disbelief, he said, Who will be my helper in the cause of God? The disciple answered, We are the helper of God. In Ahmadiyya Muslim community, everyone over the age of 40 is in Ansarullah group. So you see, life really does start when you are turned to 40. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <clears throat> in the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> Ahmadiyya community is the latest addition in the religious history. Because this community is only 120 or so year old. It was established in 19, uh, 1889. And uh, the claim of the founder was that he is the reformer of this age. And if you see in the background of uh, the events, 1889 was a significant year when many reformation societies and some society protection of the animals and the birds, they were all established and emerged from that age. So that was a changing age. And the development in the field of science and technology, they all appeared after that. So that was right in the beginning of the new age. And he was given this office that you are the reformer of this age. Now briefly I would uh, like to just uh, touch on this subject that why religion is important. Because this is an area where there are a lot of conflicts nowadays. And the religion is causing, in the name of the religion, people are causing a lot of trouble. The fundamental and basic uh, purpose of any religion is to create such citizens who are good for the other citizens who are good for the universe. And this is the age 
with, in which we are passing through and when, uh, which relates to this, the latest reformer is the age, which is a universal age. The world, you know, is really becoming like a global village. This concept of global village you may have heard before, but if you think before 1889, it was not as clear as it is clear today. And each day which dawns, it becomes, you know, the more clearer. Now, in 1889, when he claimed that he is the reformer of this age, there were few prophecies he received from God Almighty. Obviously, when I say that he received from prophecy, this refers to his uh, position because it was not a Ahmadiyya community, is not a man-made community. It is based on the revolution from God and through that revolution he was appointed as a reformer for this age. Now the basic purpose is to create such citizens who would be helpful, who will be good to their neighbors, good to the society, good to their country and good for the whole universe. Now, there are 10 conditions to join the Ahmadiyya community. Out of these 10 conditions, to specifically speak about the service to mankind. One specifically speaks about the treatment to the other creations of God, like animals and the birds. So, in 1889, he recognized the need, that what is the need of the future? This environment issue, which is very highlighted nowadays, or the green issue, he actually, you know, uh, laid down one of the conditions about this as well, uh, among the ten other conditions. And this is how, you know, the Ahmadiyya community started its journey. Now, through this journey, <clears throat> I do not want to, you know, uh, go into the details, because most of the details are available on the internet. If you just put the word Ahmadiyya, and then there are a lot of material, you know, you will come across and uh, if you have got interest, you will find out. But I will just, within five minutes, I will, uh, you know, the, give you the, some feature, salient of this community, that what it has produced. When Hazrat Ahmad, he claimed that he is the reformer of this age, God told him that I shall carry thy message to the corners of the earth. He was born in a Punjabi house in a small village in, uh, called Qadiyan in India and nobody knew where the Qadiyan was and nobody knew him. At that time he received this revolution and today the Ahmadiyya community is present in 200 countries. Its following is more than 200 million people you know, throughout the world and uh, 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 that, that shows that this is the message which you know, he received from the God and it fulfilled. This is just one, one example, you know, uh, I have given you. There are so many other revolutions he re received. Uh, now, coming uh, afterward, uh, you know, after his demise, his work was carried out through the spiritual leadership we called Khilafat or the Khalifa. Today, we have got the fifth Khalifa. The bulk of the organization work was carried out by the second Khalifa of the community, Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmood Ahmad. He divided the community into different sections, like, you know, the, uh, earlier you have heard that Ansarullah is the section of the community which uh, includes the men above 40. Now, the men who are under 40, they are called Khudamul Ahmadiyya, the youth of the community. Similarly, there is an organization for the ladies. There are two, two sections. One is the Nasratul Ahmadiyya, the girls which are up to the age of 15. And then the second group is above 15 and there is no uh, you know, limit uh, in the uh, age limit like 40 because the, <laughs> the ladies won't admit that they are 40. <laughs> <laughs> so very sensibly, he has not created this, uh, you know, the friction. <laughs> so he has divided the, you know, the girls and the women, women of the community. Now all these, uh, you know, these sections of the uh, community, they are working for the same goal. But because of their age group, they are able to undertake certain tasks which, uh, for example, the youngster cannot take and the elders can take. Like today's function is being organized by the elders of the society. And uh, this, uh, you know, type of the work uh, which involves uh, the spreading the message and things like that is undertaken by them. And Sarullah is not only taking uh, the, this type of work, they are also taking a lead in the field of uh, the charity work. They are organizing every year a charity walk, annual charity walk. Each year, this walk is organized in a different city of the UK. 
They have not reached to Scotland as yet, but one day they will be coming here as well. I hope uh, it is not too late in case this Scotland becomes independent. <laughs> <laughs> Now this is the this is this is the you know the uh, the brief description of the community. Now, as I said before, that the purpose of the religion is to create good citizens. And the second Khalifa, in 1920 or around that era, he divided the community into different sections, and then he gave the pledges to each section of the society. This is your pledge. This is your pledge. And I would like to highlight the pledge of the youth of the community which he gave to the youth at that time. That will give you the indication that what revolution he wanted to create in the world and what sort of people, because you know, 200 countries we are now present and all these organizations are working there. And the youth of the community, when he created, he said that this is your pledge and I just read the relevant part which uh, you know, uh, you, will help you to understand. And in each their meeting, before they start the meeting every month, they, 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 they take this pledge. And pledge says, I solemnly pledge that I shall always be ready to sacrifice my life, wealth, time, and honor for the sake of my faith, country, and nation. A Russian youth belonging to Ahmadiyya community, same pledge he will be repeating there in Russia. A German youth, he will be repeating the same pledge in, in, in German. Similarly, the Scottish youth will be... So this, 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 is, this is the future of the, you know, the, you know, the world, which the Ahmadiyya community is offering to them. Now, as I said that uh, the community has been given different tasks by the different, uh, with the passage of the time. The second Khalifa has done the basic fundamental framework in the organization because he established, he started establishing the mission houses and the mosques throughout the world in, in his time. Now, the other, uh, you know, the after, after him, the third Khalifa, he gave uh, a very beautiful motto to the community. Love for all, hate for none. This was, you know, the message which, uh, you know, written, uh, you know, above here uh, in, the, in the stage. This was given by the third, uh, th third Khalifa. He, during his period, there were some other, uh, you know, the, the things which are very significant and also the persecution of the Ahmadiyya community. That, that also started from, emerges from that, uh, you know, the era, from his era. After the third Khalifa, the fourth Khalifa took forward the, you know, the work furthermore. And uh, he, because the Ahmadiyya community right from the first day, they are participating in every good work. But with the passage of time, the community was increasing, it was ga gaining the momentum, so the, the, the framework was needed you know, for bigger activities. So the fourth Khalifa, he established uh, Humanity First, an international charity organization, which is now in many countries, you know, it is properly registered and working. Similarly, the present head of the community, the fifth Khalifa, he has taken over the responsibility of spreading the message of peace throughout the world. And during his era, the Ahmadiyya community has started holding the peace conferences throughout the world. And in Scotland, we have been, uh, you know, so far, uh, uh, you know, holding the, these conferences in different cities uh, and the villages and, uh, the, and, and the towns. So five, six conferences we, we have been, uh, you know, we managed to hold. And in future, in, uh, we will keep on, you know, repeating in remote areas as well. So this is, this, is, this is the work of the Ahmadiyya community, which, uh, you know, gave you some understanding that what type of community we are. I hope uh, this will uh, uh, enlighten you. And uh, after the, you know, the dinner, you had the opportunity to see this exhibition. And the purpose of this exhibition was that unfortunately, unfortunately, the message of uh, Islam and the Quran has been totally hijacked by the extreme groups. And they are interpreting in such a way which is creating friction between the societies, friction between the Muslims as well. And the Ahmadiyya community has undertaken this task under the guidance of the reformer of this age because he left 80 books during his time and all those books, they deal with the, all the problems which we are facing today. And in the commentary of the Holy Quran, in the translation of the Holy Quran, the community has taken the guideline from those and according to that, you know, the, uh, the, the teachings of the Holy Quran, it offers the real peace and the opportunity for the world and uh, the peaceful, uh, you know, the future of this uh, uh, coming world, which, uh, you know, we, we are passing through. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would now request the regional missionary in charge to Scotland, 
Mr. Daud Ahmed Qureshi Saab to very briefly talk about the philosophy of Hajj and the festival of Eid. Respected Chairman and uh, my very, very revered and respected guests. As the Chairman have just mentioned, that very briefly I would like to highlight uh, the philosophy uh, behind the Hajj which is pilgrimage and Eid we celebrate. In actual fact, when we go into detail of the history, we can see from the history that uh, the pilgrimage to Mecca is not a new thing or it is not only for the Muslims that they go, but uh, it is a very old tradition which has been carried out by different faiths, by different religions and different people. In the Holy Quran, we can see that uh, Allah the Almighty mentioned this thing that inna awwala baitin wazia lil nase lallazi bibakkata mubarakan that the first house which was built to unite people and create the unity of God and understanding of Allah the Almighty that was in Mecca. And uh, there was a vision she, uh, seen by one of the Muslim saint, which is, who, whose name was Ibn Arbi. He saw that uh, there are people of different colors and different shapes. They are making the circle of Kaaba. And he asked them that, are you the progeny or from the generation of Adam? So they say that, uh, which Adam you are talking about? That uh, uh, for millions of years, we have been doing the circle of Kaaba, which shows that uh, the Kaaba, or Holy Kaaba, is not a new city, but as I have mentioned that uh, with the reference of the Holy Quran, that it was, it is a very old city, and uh, with the passage of time, uh, different prophet, prophets were asked to rebuild it and come and worship of Allah the Almighty. Particularly, uh, it has been mentioned in the Holy Quran that uh, Hazrat Ibrahim and his son Ishmael and uh, the wife Hagar, they were commanded by Allah the Almighty to purify their house. And uh, for the people who come and uh, circle the Kaaba, who want to come and worship in that house, and uh, they did so. And uh, in the memory of uh, those incidents which took place in the life of uh, Hazrat Ibrahim and his son Ishmael and uh, Hagar, uh, Muslims celebrate this day as Eid al-Azha and also the uh, uh, pilgrimage. I would like to mention few things here that when uh, Hazrat Ishmael, he was very young or even he was a little child, uh, Ibrahim settled him and his mother to that very ancient city of Mecca and uh, the verses which have, were read before here at the beginning, they tells that uh, Abraham said, Oh my Lord, I have settled my progeny, or I have settled my children in an uncultivated land, so you take care of them. And in that memory of uh, those days when uh, the son of uh, Hazrat Ibrahim, Ismail, was very thirsty, and uh, Hagar was going round to, to uh, the hills, which is called Safa Marwa and Marwa. And uh, it so pleased to Allah the Almighty that uh, when Muslim go for pilgrimage, they do seven rounds of those uh, Safa and Marwa also. The word Eid, which we have seen that we are celebrating this Eid, it is also not a new word, but uh, when we study the Old Testament and also New Testament, this, these words have been mentioned here that uh, the Jewish community and particularly the Christian community, they also celebrate these days, the days of happiness. And it has been mentioned in the Holy Quran also that uh, once Jesus Christ asked from Allah the Almighty that, oh my Lord, send a table for us so that it becomes a day of happiness for us and day for, a day of Eid for us. And uh, as I have mentioned that uh, one also incident took place in the life of uh, Hazrat Ibrahim and Ishmael 
that uh, Allah the Almighty commanded Abraham to sacrifice his son Ishmael in the way of Allah. He understood in this way that uh, maybe he has been commanded to physically sacrifice his son. And he was so, you know, eager to do, do that one that uh, he told his son that this is what I have seen in the dream. And the son said, oh, oh my father, do as you have been commanded by Allah the Almighty. And uh, physically, he laid down his son and wanted to slot him. But suddenly, Allah the Almighty stopped him and told him, you have already fulfilled your uh, you know, promise with Allah the Almighty by devoting the life of your son, by devoting your children for the cause of Allah and settling them in a very remote place where there was no life. So, and in the memory of the, uh, you know, that incident, Allah the Almighty commanded Hazrat Ibrahim to set, slot an animal or slot a ram at that time. And uh, the reward which Allah the Almighty gave to Hazrat Ibrahim and his son and Hagar was that now we can see that millions of people every year, millions of Muslims every year, they slot different animals, camels, sheep, goats, and uh, uh, cows in the memory of that great sacrifice which was, uh, uh, you know, presented by Hazrat Ibrahim, uh, you know, to Allah the Almighty. So this is a philosophy, uh, you know, really behind the Eid, that uh, in the memory of uh, that great sacrifice which was offered by Hazrat Ibrahim, we celebrate this Eid. The last thing which I would like to mention here, that uh, one other prey was offered by Hazrat Ibrahim, and that was that, O oh Allah, uh, send a prophet, uh, you know, in, the, in my progeny, who will purify the people. And this was really accepted by Allah the Almighty, and he sent the Holy Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. And uh, we know that uh, when he came, there were from 360 idols in the Holy Kaaba. But uh, by, with his efforts and great sacrifices given by himself and his companions, he was able to conquer Mecca. He purified the house of Allah the Almighty. And since that day, then the real, plus, uh, real sacrifices started. And in the memory of uh, those days also, uh, he also slaughtered the same, anim same type of animal. And the memory and the tradition, uh, following the tra those traditions of Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we always sacrifice, uh, you know, uh, celebrate these days uh, as uh, we celebrated few days ago. And uh, you are here to, uh, with us to, you know, join in this party. And uh, I welcome you again and I'm thankful for your attention. I would now like to request our chief guest, His Excellency, Mr. Wolfgang Mossinger, Council General of Federal Republic of Germany for Scotland. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uncertain why I was chosen for the great honor of opening this exhibition and of being your chief guest tonight, the exhibition of translations of the Holy Quran. Perhaps you read my CV online and learned that I'm a trained language teacher. However, you could not have known that my dissertation was in fact about linguistic challenges of translations, <laughs> which made me to respect the work of translators even more. And the biggest challenge for all translators occur, of course, when they have to translate a book as significant as the Holy Quran, in which every single word is so important. Or maybe I was chosen because you heard of our relentless efforts to support the German language in Scottish schools, universities, and colleges, and wish to give me the po uh, give a hint to your community, in particular the younger members of your community, to learn German. You don't have to answer that, just <laughs> nod, that's fine. Thank you very much. Whatever the reason, I'm very thankful for this great honor, and I accepted your invitation gladly for many reasons. First, I'm delighted to join you again today 
after the memorable evening in the city chambers in March 2009, when I had the great honor to meet Khalifa Hadrat Misa Mesur Ahmad. It is inspiring to be among those who strive for tolerance and mutual understanding and who despise violence of any kind. Second, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Association is very internationally minded. The Scottish Association has acquired the good old Scottish tradition of engaging with the wider world and embracing other countries and cultures. In this respect, may I say, you are well and truly Scots. Third, I'm also glad to contribute to the opening of this wonderful exhibition. It allows you to share your culture, your traditions, and your belief, not to missionize, but to enable us all to make informed decisions about our own lives and the directions we want to follow. Fourth, the exhibition is also evidence of the global significance of Islam and the Holy Book upon which your belief is founded. Not only are there Muslims in almost every country in the world, but the Holy Quran has been translated in almost every significant language. And finally, you have shown neighbors and friends the hospitality that is typical of Eid on one of the greatest days of the year in the Muslim calendar. Could there be any stronger proof of your generous hospitality than you, a good Glaswegian, inviting somebody from Edinburgh to join him on this day? <laughs> for this great occasion? I think not. For all these reasons, it is a great pleasure and honor for me to be part of this display of learnedness in the midst of joyful celebrations. Thank you very much. I would now request our other guest of honor, Consulate General of the Russian Federation to Scotland, Mr. Sergei Krotikov, to kindly say a few words. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. Uh, I was not prepared to, to, to speak, to have a speech here, so I will just speak from my heart and say that I am very thankful for your kind invitation, for the opportunity to come here. You know, when I got this in invitation and uh, heard the reason for, for, for this, uh, our uh, meeting, the, the, um, your celebration and certainly the, the exhibition, uh, I was really uh, uh, glad to, to, uh, to learn that uh, uh, there is a high um, respect and a high uh, possibility that uh, in my country where uh, the Muslim population is approximately 10% of the population of the country, it's about 15 million people, who live in uh, um, uh, seven major republics, uh, districts, and uh, regions, uh, primarily in the south part of the country. Uh, they are, um, they are uh, um, almost, uh, yes, it's about 10%, but uh, altogether in Russia there are people speaking almost 100 languages. So this unity, the uh, mutual respect for not only religion, but uh, culture of different uh, peoples, uh, uh, difficult, uh, different nationalities, is the most, the most important thing, uh, thing for the existence of, of uh, my country. So uh, I'm, um, I, when, I, when I was young, I lived, uh, not far away from a big mosque in Moscow. And uh, uh, at that time, uh, at the Soviet time, it was not a thing that people spoke much about. Uh, but certainly now, when, when uh, my son is uh, 25, he, he uh, well, he cherished his religion. He is a Christian. Of but uh, certainly there are no, no real obstacles for, for Muslims now to go to Mecca and other, other places, holy places for that. And uh, that is really, really fantastic. I, I, I must say that uh, all major religions, and uh, Muslim religion is the second one after uh, Christian, Christianity in, in, in Russia, uh, they are 
living together and respect each other, and this is the way that that should be. And I was very glad to hear the, the same words uh, here already. Uh, so, so thank you very much for, for your, your kind invitation. I am, I'm really honored to be here with you, and um, um, I, I feel very, very well here in, in your place. Thank you very much. Ahmadiyya Muslim Association UK continues to hold such events around the country in order to put forward the correct and true face of Islam. All religions, I think people who are students of history or religion, know that most of the religions have passed through various phases in history. And unfortunately, this is the time at which Islam is at the forefront of anything and everything happening around the world probably, whether it is terrorism, whether it is war, and somehow the name of Islam is put forward and splashed across the headlines around the world. Why we do such events is that this has got nothing to do with the teachings of the Holy Quran or the teachings of the Holy Prophet. Ahmadiyya Muslim Association, as has already been pointed out, founded in 1889, and the promised Messiah, who called himself the Messiah of the later days, which all the religions of the world are waiting for. And the interpretations of Islam that you would see here in the exhibition, or the translations, it is the challenge of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Association to any Muslim around the world to challenge these. These are, because the holy book, not even a single word of the holy scripture has been changed since the day it was revealed to the holy prophet more than 1400 years ago. The original text is still there in Arabic. And people may ask, obviously, then why there are so many different interpretations of this religion? that people call to arms and jihad and terrorism and suicide bombing and what not, you know, uh, from banning driving for women and taking away the rights of women. I have no answer to this apart from saying that these are mostly cultural interpretations of things. If you read the Holy Quran, the verses of the Holy Quran and the translations which are there, it is very clear by the name of the religion Islam, which in itself means peace. So we hold such uh, events in various forms, peace conferences, question answer sessions, and Eid parties to spread forward the true face and the true message of Islam. And I'm very grateful that you have joined us here today. I'm also very grateful to Majlis Ansarullah UK Scotland, uh, the regional Nazim Saab, and all his team who worked very hard tirelessly under the guidance of our regional uh, president for Scotland, Mr. Ghaffar Abid Saab as well, uh, to organize this event. We, I, I'm more than happy to, uh, if there are any questions, if anybody would have about Islam, and if anybody would want to ask any questions, uh, uh, I can take a few minutes out and uh, we'll be happy to answer them, or at uh, once we are having dinner, or once you are looking at exhibition, I'm sure there would be members around because there are so many misconceptions about Islam and there are so many burning questions which people do ask when, wherever we go. Uh, uh, so if there is anything that uh, we can do while we are here, please do let us know. Once again, thank you very much. I have a message from uh, the First Minister of Scotland, Mr. Alex Solomon, who couldn't be here today. He is asked to convey that he very much values the contribution made by Scotland's Ahmadiyya Muslim community. And uh, he apologizes and sends his best wishes for this event. I would now also like to request our regional missionary in charge, Mr. Daud Ahmed Qureshi Saab, to present the gift of the Holy Quran to both our honorary, honorable guests. Yes, this is the copy of the Holy Quran in their native languages. So can I request His Excellency Mr. Wolfgang Mossinger, Council General of Federal Republic of Germany. And similarly, His Excellency Mr. Sergei 
Krotikov, Council General for the Russian Federation. Can I now request Mr. Bob Tomlinson for a vote of thanks, please? Mr. Chairman, uh, honored guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I feel so at home here. Uh, I was born less than a mile from here, uh, not 40 years ago. Uh, life for me begins, well, next year at 70. Uh, so I remember this place well. I, I have also worked in Germany. I have also worked in the USSR and in Russia. Uh, so I feel so much at home. I must be very honest with you, uh, as a Scot and a Glaswegian, when Abdul invited me to say, that, give the vote of thanks, I thought it would come after dinner. So, so I, I had prepared an after dinner vote of thanks for you. <laughs> Suffice to say, I'm quite delighted because it means I can now enjoy my dinner. Uh, there is so much to be said about the good work uh, that you do here in the community. And every time uh, we have come here to enjoy your friendship and your hospitality, we do go away uplifted and we do go away informed in a way that enhances uh, all that you do and frankly, all that, that this city stands for. It was so kind to hear uh, of a reading uh, from Abraham about making the city a city of peace. And that's what we would like Glasgow to be. And you bring that to our city. You talk about the instability in the world and the, the ignorance that has to be broken down. Uh, and life does start at 40. Uh, it does indeed. I'm hoping it starts again at 70. Uh, Maggie and I took part in a charity walk here uh, with your people. And I have to say, I was left standing uh, because Abdul and I decided to go at our pace and others went at their pace, and we were very much at the back, but we did, walk, we did finish the walk. Mutual respect has, some, has been referred to on in, in many occasions, and making good citizens of people. And I, in my vote of thanks, have to say this and ask people of Glasgow and others to jo join me in, in doing this. We have to thank you for bringing a message to Glasgow, love for all, hatred for none, what more? could we ask for in this great and wonderful city? But one of the wonderful things that we have found about the, your community is that you don't simply do this by talking. You actually show by the actions and the way that you love people and the way that you care for the people and for the city is quite remarkable. It is such a joy and such a pleasure to be here for the day of happiness. Uh, and I must thank Safir, who I've never met before, who I've been sitting with, and he's been helping me before the speeches and throughout the speeches. I've been asking him questions. What does this mean? What does that mean? And Safia, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in, in thanking not only those speakers that we've had the pleasure of listening to, but to the community, and also as a Glaswegian, to those who are preparing our dinner, even as we speak. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Bob. It is our common tradition that we end our formal proceedings with a silent prayer. That is nothing more than raising our hand to our face and praying to our Lord. You are more than welcome to join us or pray in your own way. I would now request missionary in charge to Scotland, Mulana Daud Ahmed Qureshi Saab, to kindly lead us in a silent prayer. Please join me in silent prayer. <laughs> 